This image from the thumbnail is not the prototype of the British Challenger 3. I could make the argument that it sort of is, but I think I'd lose that argument in court for three reasons. The first is that the tank in this image isn't a prototype at all. Rather, it's a technology demonstrator. And if that were the only issue, maybe this whole thing could be written off as a matter of semantics. But there's another, much more important problem, and it's that the picture of this technology demonstrator was taken way back in 2006 as part of the Challenger Capability and Sustainment Program, almost a full decade before the Challenger 2 Life Extension Program formally started, which is the program that's actually developing the Challenger 3. What caused the confusion was that the upload date of this photo to Wikimedia was in 2013, around the time that I remember the Life Extension Program starting. And so I saw that date, and I saw a Challenger with a smoothbore gun, and I put two and two together and came up with five. But it actually gets even a bit worse than that, because the smoothbore gun that I thought I was looking at isn't the L55 Rheinmetall gun slated for use on the Challenger 3. Rather, it's a hybrid gun referred to as Chord, which combined various aspects of the currently used rifled L30A1 and the smoothbore L55. So, while the Challenger 3 is going to be based largely on the Challenger 2, and probably the single biggest change is that it's going to be using a smoothbore gun, I'm going to call my labeling of this picture the prototype of the British Challenger 3 quite wrong. Now, that brings us back to what's, in my view, the second most egregious error that I made in this video, but you could argue that it's actually the worst, which is that I said the Challenger 2 is the only currently produced modern tank using a rifled gun. This is just absolutely wrong. The Indian Arjun, entered production in 2004, continues to be produced today, and uses a 120mm rifled gun. By the way, if anyone happens to know whether the gun that the Arjun uses is a licensed version of the L30 or an indigenous Indian design, please do tell me in the comments. In any case, no disrespect to India intended, I just didn't know about this, and it's possible that there are other modern tanks I'm not aware of that also use a rifled gun. I've even heard that there are some Leopard 2s in Canada that have been retrofitted with rifled guns, but take that claim with a grain of salt because I can't find an authoritative source to back it up. Again, if anyone does know, please do tell me in the comments. Finally, as many, many people pointed out, heat rounds don't actually form a molten metal jet, but rather a metal super plastic jet in order to penetrate armor. Now, believe it or not, I actually did look up the Wikipedia page on heat rounds before writing the script for my first video but I figured that throwing around terms like metal superplastic would confuse some people and make others think that I was just trying to be some sort of smart aleck. But it turns out that a lot of people actually did know about this and cared that I didn't use the technically correct terminology. In the future on this channel, I'll try to use terminology that's as technically accurate as I'm able to get. Another really important thing about heat rounds and not something that I actually said, but something that many people might have inferred based on my improper use of the word molten, is the idea that heat rounds work by melting their way through enemy armor. That isn't the case at all. Instead, the super plastic jet simply uses a combination of its hypersonic velocity and pressure from the explosion to punch its way through armor, not totally unlike a kinetic penetrator. Now, it's entirely possible that I've missed some errors in my first video, even some of those that were pointed out to me in the comments, and even some of those which I responded to. Sadly, I didn't start writing down the really insightful comments people made right from the start, and I suspect that there are some which just got lost in the thousands of comments that I've received these last few weeks. I promise that this isn't intentional or nefarious. It's just a result of the fact that I'm as much of a fallible human being now as I was when I made my first video. Maybe a little bit more so. And it's also why the everything in the title of this video comes with an asterisk. I know that even if I did catalog literally everything that people pointed out as wrong up to this point, well, then someone might just point out something new tomorrow. So I'm not going to assume that this video is all-encompassing, and neither should you. With that said, I'm also going to use this video as an opportunity to go over some of the omissions I had and really good points that other people made in my last video, which you may have seen either as this or as this depending on when you watched it. First, a really important thing that I forgot to mention about Hesh rounds is that spaced armor is very effective at mitigating the damage that they do to armored vehicles, much like it is to heat rounds. It's not hard to imagine why, because if you cause the Hesh round to detonate on a cage offset from the armor itself, then the shockwave produced is either going to have to go through the air in between, or the very narrow attachment points of the cage to the armor in order to even reach the armor on the other side. 
and this relatively cheap addition to tanks and other armored vehicles has likely also played a role in diminishing the effectiveness of, and priority given to, Hesh rounds. Another really good point made by several people in the comments in my last video was that the British may be changing to a smoothbore gun for the Challenger 3 simply to standardize with the rest of NATO, and this in itself could be a really compelling reason to make the change, as it would allow the British to use ammo interchangeably with American or German tanks, since you'll remember that many types of ammo, including both Heat and Sabo, as well as Hesh or HEP rounds, need to be specialized for use in either smoothbore or rifled guns. And I'm sure that some of the other NATO countries have encouraged the British, with some amount of political pressure, to move in this direction. Now, another huge advantage that was pointed out to me, which I really hadn't even considered, is that smoothbore guns can apparently fire a significantly larger number of rounds over their service lives than rifled guns can, and require less frequent and less intensive maintenance. And if you think about it, it's not hard to imagine why this would be the case. Essentially, a smooth barrel is just a lot simpler than a rifled one is, and those spiral grooves that make a barrel rifled, well, they'll be prone to wear down over time, and they'll tend to be harder to clean. However, I also had someone who's extremely knowledgeable on this topic reach out to me between my last video and this one, and bring up a lot of really good points in favor of rifled guns and the way that the British currently do things. And rather than trying to explain all of these things myself, I instead decided to ask this person if he'd be willing to do an interview on this channel. Now, I should be clear that absolutely nothing has been agreed to yet, but if this person is who he says he is, and he agrees to come on my channel and share some of his real-world experience on this topic, well, then we're going to hit the brakes on our detour away from tanks, postpone the nuclear video one more week, and take advantage of the opportunity, should it present itself, to talk with someone who understands this topic much better than I ever will. And in case that does happen, and you want to make sure that you see it, then I have to put in the obligatory reminder about subscribing to this channel if you're not, hitting the bell icon, and liking this video if you liked it. And lastly, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to roll out the Diffusum Ideas social media accounts and announce that we're going to be holding monthly polls on video ideas that people submit to me on social media. The way that this is going to work is that there will be five options that I select from all the video ideas submitted. That's the maximum number of options that YouTube polls allow for. And voting will take place in the last week of each month on the topic of a video which will come out on the last week of the next month. So if you're interested, be sure to submit your ideas by May 24th and vote in the poll that will come out on that day by May 31st. And who knows, maybe it'll be your idea that gets made into a video in late June. In addition to these viewer submitted video ideas, I'm also going to have specific times that I'm on social media where I'm available to talk with any of you who are interested, including in voice chat. The first of these will be this Saturday, May 21st, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Central Standard Time on the Diffusum Ideas Discord channel, with links to be made available on the Diffusum Ideas subreddit. I hope I'll get the chance to talk with you then. This has been a short, and in many ways administrative video, but again I'll end by saying, I'm Josh, this is Diffusome Ideas, you've been watching everything wrong with why do most modern tanks use smoothbore guns. Thank you so much, and I'll see you all again in the next one.